Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways of inserting a tick box or a checkbox into a Microsoft Word document. Either one which the user can simply click and put a check mark in, or the type of checkbox where you can simply type a tick box or a cross box or indeed an empty box for people to use. If you're creating a form for someone to fill in, either electronically or you're printing it off uh, for them to fill in by hand, it's sometimes useful to be able to provide a tick box or a check box. And there are a couple of different ways of doing this. If you're delivering the document to them electronically or emailing it to them, uh, then it may well be useful to have tick boxes that they can simply click like that. Uh, if you're instead wanting to print off a document and hand to people and you just want to have a box for them to put a tick in manually with a pen, then you may want to be able to uh, provide an option like this. So you're simply then typing a tick box. It's not clickable. Double clicking it doesn't do anything apart from bringing up the symbols panel there. Uh, so there's no way in which you can uh, simply click like this which is fine if you're just simply printing this document off. The third uh, thing to mention here is that sometimes you might have been sent a document, a, a form in Microsoft Word that you need to fill in yourself and someone has provided tick boxes but they're not clickable ones. Um, they've asked you to email it back but there's no way in which you can click these boxes and put a tick in them. In which case what you'll need is a method for simply deleting the box that they've given you and then typing the one that you want, either a tick box uh, or a cross box. Uh, I've had to do that a number of times. It's, it's amazing how many people do send forms out that you need to tick boxes in um, and there is no way of ticking that particular type of box they've included. So I'm going to show you um, these, these two different methods here, uh, all of which are very, very simple. Um, and the first thing that you'll need to do to make sure that you've got the, uh, the right tools for this is to have the developer tab in at the top of your ribbon. Uh, you've got all these different tabs, home, insert, design and so forth um, and you need to have developer. If you don't, don't worry, it's very easy to get it. All you need to do is to find a blank grey area somewhere in the ribbon area, it doesn't matter where, uh, anywhere where there's not a button. Simply right click in that blank grey area and choose customize the ribbon. Brings up this panel and on the right hand side what we have here are a list of all of the tabs uh, available to us in the ribbon at the top. You'll see that developer here is ticked because it's displayed, it's visible on my screen, uh, but if you don't see the developer tab at the top then it's because this is not ticked. So simply put a tick in there, click OK and you will have this developer tab. Now to insert a clickable tick box, one that people can click and it will put a check mark in that, you'll need to find this section here and the tick box or check box control just there on the left. Uh, there are various controls here, you've got text boxes, drop down lists, uh, things like that, date pickers, uh, but the tick box here is the one you want. Simply click it once and a tick box will appear and then you can simply press the right arrow key uh, a couple of times and then type out your option. So let's do that again, let's click on the tick box, press the right arrow key twice and then type out our option. So these now are simple checkboxes. If we were to print this form off they would appear just like that and could be used manually to fill in a tick uh, but you can simply click these and get that check mark in. Now what you'll notice is that in the first example here, when I click these checkboxes, I don't get that frame around the text, uh, the uh, checkbox, whereas here I do. It doesn't matter too much, it does disappear once you've clicked off it, um, but it's one of those things that you may want to get rid of. Uh, very easy to do that. Simply click on the checkbox and uh, get this frame up and find the little grey button at the top left corner. Click that to select the whole of the checkbox. 
and then still up in the developer tab what you'll need to do is click on properties if you click on properties uh, you're looking for this option here that says show as bounding box drop down that list there and choose none and click OK we'll do the same for this one so we'll click on the grey button at the top left click on properties and change bounding box to none click OK and they still now work as text bo uh, check boxes of course but we don't get that frame appearing around the outside so that's how to create a, a clickable tick box using the designer um, tab but what about if you just simply want to be able to type a tick box uh, or a cross box or a blank box how am I doing that it's very simple actually what you need to do is to start off by going to the insert tab in your ribbon and all the way along on the right hand side you have symbol click on the drop down um, button there you might have some symbols especially those that you've used recently if you have uh, but don't worry about that what you're looking for is the option at the bottom that says more symbols click on that now the font that you'll need uh, is probably going to be wingdings so if you scroll right to the bottom of this you'll have a whole list of all your fonts installed uh, webdings is quite useful got some useful uh, symbols there um, and there is a, a tick in there somewhere but I tend to use wingdings this is the most useful one so not wingdings two or three just wingdings and then if you scroll down a little way near the bottom there we are in fact right at the bottom uh, here we have a tick box with a tick in it a tick box with a cross in it a tick on its own and a cross on its own so if I want to insert a single tick box like this one here I can simply click on that and choose insert and that would insert that tick box however that's quite a slow method and although it's fine if you just want to insert one tick box that's okay what about if you want to do this a number of times um, or to include an empty tick box such as this one here a number of times how do we do that well let's take this example here of an empty tick box that we might well want to use several times you can do this method for any of these symbols any symbol at all in here indeed uh, so you could do this for any of those but I'm going to demonstrate it using this empty tick box just two or three lines further up so I've selected this symbol as the one I want to use regularly what we'll need to do is come down to where it says shortcut key so this is the keyboard shortcut that we can use whenever we want to type this empty tick box let's click on shortcut key at the moment we can see I've already got a shortcut I'll get rid of that in there so you can see me setting this up from scratch so what you'll need to do is click inside this box where it says press new shortcut key so you can now come up with whatever keyboard shortcut you want to use what do you want to be able to do in order to type this blank um, checkbox? I tend to use Alt B, so I'm holding down the Alt button, the ALT button to the left of the space bar, holding that down and then pressing the letter B. Having pressed that keyboard shortcut, it appears in here. That makes sense to me. Um, Alt B is, is or well, if you're using Alt as a shortcut, that's usually pretty safe. Control and a letter, Shift and a letter, a lot of those are already used within the program. And although you can replace most of them, it can get a little awkward. Uh, so I tend to use Alt and then a letter which makes sense. B is for box. It's as simple as that. So I tend to use Alt and a letter for shortcut keys. I recommend that. Having chosen the shortcut, I will then assign it and then close. And then I can close this as well. Now we haven't inserted it yet. We haven't done that. We've simply told the computer uh, we want you to type an empty checkbox whenever I type Alt B. So let's test this out. I hold Alt down, I press the letter B, and there is my box. So I can now, um, option, let's say we've got blue, red, green. 
So it's incredibly quick and simple to create a survey or a questionnaire or a form that's then going to be printed off and given to someone to fill in manually by using that method. These aren't checkboxes that you can click and type uh, or just going to click like these ones up here, but they're great for just quickly producing something that people can fill in manually. So there we are. We've got the clickable tick boxes there. We've got the option to include these symbols here just as easily as I've shown you with this empty check box uh, that we can do using Alt B. And incidentally, the other ones I set up here, um, I was simply pressing Alt T for a tick, Alt C for a cross, and then I've got the Alt B for an empty one. And you can apply that shortcut method to any symbol at all that you use regularly. So even in your normal fonts, uh, if there is uh, a particular symbol that you use, maybe the euro symbol or the copyright symbol, um, or you've got mathematical symbols, halves and quarters, if there's a number or symbol that you tend to, to type a lot, um, then you can use this shortcut key method to make it more efficient for you to include the symbols you use more regularly. Uh, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Uh, and you might also consider sharing this uh, video and, of course, subscribing to the channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.